Hello to everybody, my name is Juan Felipe Alonso Camacho. I'm assistant physician at Epidemiology of Neurosurgery in Samaritana University Hospital at Bogota, Colombia. Today I'm going to talk about the multimodal onyx embolization of an indirect carotid cavernous fistula with cortical venous reflux as a technical note. We know that the indirect carotid cavernous fistula are shown between meningeal branches of interior carotid artery and exterior carotid artery between the cavernous sinus. The indirect carotid cavernous fistula are the 83% of all carotid cavernous fistula and symptomatic indirect carotid cavernous fistula are those with an increased risk of hemorrhage should be treated. The transvenous endovascular treatment is a preferred treatment modality. However, in complex case, a combination of transarterial and transvenous approach as a multimodal treatment is required. For that reason, we perform a retrospective review of endovascular registry of an academic institution in Colombia to identify patients that present ICCF, including cortical venous reflux, treated with multimodal approach, including transvenous and transarterial approach, between January of 2020 and April of 2021. The information regarding their clinical presentation, diagnosis, and treatment was collected. The retrospective a study show us only one patient with a, of middle age as female presented with signs of increased intraocular pressure, including plurivision, diplopia, left proptosis, chemosis, conjunctival injection, ptosis, and a six cranial nerve palsy. Consider patient symptoms. We suspect that she got a cavernous sinus fistula. In the external carotid artery injection, we could see the relationship between the medial meningeal artery that is showing the black arrow and the relation with the anterior pharyngeal artery and the connection between the cavernous sinus and the indirect carotid cavernous fistula. In this lateral projection, we could see the relationship between the venous flow. Here we see in the white arrow the superior ophthalmic vein in the relationship of the venous drainage, and principally the cortical venous reflux selected with the black arrow that confirms this is a case of a barrel type D and Thomas IV. For that reason, we perform a transant serial carotid carinus fistula embolization. As in this image, we can see a lateral projection that confirms the persistence of the venous reflex to the cavernous sinus. For that reason, we decide to take the patient for a second uh, treatment with a transvenous embolization that includes a multimodal approach for the indirect carotid cavernous fistula. In the transvenous embolization, here we see an anti uh, lateral uh, projection of a road mapping and guiding catheter that was advanced through the brachiocephalic vein and the external jugular vein. This microcatheter was advanced to the left posterior and anterior branches of the retromandibular vein, then through the facial left vein that is showing the black arrow at the angular that is showing more superior in the black arrow tip and superior ophthalmic vein that is showing the relationship with the cavernous. As confirming this vein relationship, once proper placement of the microcatheter was confirmed through the transvenous contrast injection, onyx embolization of the cavernous sinus was started that it, and as is shown in this image. One month follow-up to suppression angiography was an evidence total occlusion of the left-sided indirect carotid cavernous fistula. In conclusion, the multimodal onyx embolization is an effective option for the treatment of a complex symptomatic indirect carotid 
fistula. If the cortical venous reflux is identified, this lesion should be promptly treated to prevent MRI secondary to rupture. We recognize our limitation of this study for generalization and recommendations.